Okay, we're working on a vintage inner type machine. I think this is a model C4, and it's probably from the mid to late 1950s. The workhorse of typesetting in the 20th century. So, Mergenthal realized that instead of taking existing type and composing sentences, he would invent a machine that actually made the type. And so the intertype machine is composed of a composing section, a casting section, and a distribution section. And the key to this whole thing is the matrix, or a mat. It's a small piece of brass on which is engraved a character, in this case, the Roman and Italian. So you just pass that around. And for every key, there's an accompanying mat. So here we have the uppercase, the lowercase, the punctuation and figures. And for every key here, not only, not only is there one mat, but there's as many mats as is mathematically computed would be consumed in a sentence. So in the English language, you're going to consume a lot more E's than K's. So if you look in the magazine here, you can see that there might be 20 E's, but there might only be 11 K's. So they distributed this according to common usage. And so now we have enough mats to set a line of type, distribute that, and replenish the supply endlessly. Incredibly ingenious. So the way this works is you press a key, And if you look here, there's all these little rods. And every time you hit a key, you hit, it triggers a cam, which pushes a rod up. And when the rod goes up, it hits a trigger, which releases the mat. When that happens, the mat just simply falls by gravity down these chutes, hits this conveyor belt, runs along the conveyor belt, and is assembled in the composing step. Now you've been watching these people and saying their names, so you're familiar with that. Then we elevate it. The mats go along to the vise. They descend to the mold. The mold is injected with molten lead at 525 degrees. The mats are elevated to the second uh, station. That arm comes down, picks them up, and they go back in their right slots. And the slugs, which are still in the mold, the mold disc rotates, it trims it on the bottom to make sure it's exactly 0.918 of an inch high, and it trims it on the faces to make sure it's totally true, so that when these are stacked up, everything's perfectly rectangular. So it's an incredibly ingenious system. From a historical point of view, I think the importance of this machine can't be overstated because it's quite simply the uh, single most important machine probably of the 19th century in that it transformed the dissemination of information in the world. You've got to consider in 1886 when this was built, there was no television, there were no movies, there was no radio. There was no other way of conveying information except through words. And up until this point, every single piece of type in a magazine or a newspaper was set by hand. So you can imagine how incredibly, ridiculously laborious that was, how time-consuming it was, how labor-intensive, and how impossible it was to get something done in a turnaround time so there'd be any currency in anything. 
and they were trying to turn out newspapers this way. So then this machine came along, you could ride 24 hours a day, you could do the work of five men, and all of a sudden there was an incredible blossoming of information and publication around the world. And this dominated typesetting for the greater part of the 20th century. The Global Mail was cast on one of these up until about 1973, which seems implausible today, because that's so relatively recent in our history. But uh, this was uh, up until effectively the advent of digitization, this was it. 